Welcome back, my friends. I'm Terry, and today I got something special for you all. It's what we've all been waiting for. I'm finally going to be swapping out my radiator on my BMW Z3. Let's get it. After weeks and weeks of research, I have finally decided on which radiator would be the best one for my needs for my Z3. And I know you guys are excited. A lot of you have been waiting patiently. I will, I will congratulate on how patient you all have been while I've been working on this project. It's been a very expensive project and it's taken a lot longer than what I had originally planned. But I got a radiator and I'm going to show you what one I picked out. All right, I know a lot of you have been very curious as to which brand I was going to go with. And I think this is going to shock a lot of you because I know the most common one that a lot of uh, guys choose is actually not a very good one. And I didn't do that. So let's show you what I got. The big reveal is coming up. And the big reveal is... Koyo! This is what we got, you guys. I got a 1.9 inch, uh, two core uh, aluminum uh, radiator from Koyo, uh, Koyo Rad. So this is the one that I got. And for those of you that were thinking I went Mishimoto, ha, you are mistaken. I went ahead and got a fantastic, fantastic radiator. Let's dig in a little bit more about it real quick. All right, let's get that close up, shall we? So here we have it. Like I said, this is a 1.9 inch, technically it's 1.89 inch core. On here we got the beautiful, it's been welded by hand, uh, TIG welded by hand, and it looks fantastic. It's got a great aluminum polish on there, looks really, really clean. And it's a very light radiator. And this one's going to have a drop-in fit. So it's, it's made to fit around your fan and your AC and all that stuff. Now this radiator is the Koyo HH422674. And this is a racing radiator. This one's made for um, if you're going to have more spirited uh, driving on the road or if you're going to take it on the track, this one can handle that. I wanted to give it a bit of an upgrade from the OEM stock radiator that was in the car just because I want to be prepared in case I decide because I, I have been considering doing autocross and this would be the Z3 here would be my very first time ever participating in autocross so I'm just trying to make sure that if I do decide to go that route that I am ready to go now given the water pump I put in I should have gone with a, a different one, but I still got the metal uh, impeller on there, so I should still be, um, I should be fine. But uh, going ahead and we're getting this beautiful radiator right here. Now, this is actually a radiator that was designed for the 3 Series, the 88 to 99 six-cylinder E36s, in fact. But it turns out that this radiator is also compatible with the Z. Three. Now there will be some little hiccups and the one little hiccup with that is for your Z3 if you have a 2000s model like I do uh, the radiator here is as you can see well you'll see better when I take the other one out but this radiator is actually a little thicker and the issue with it is is uh, it will rub up against your cool air intake uh, right over in there it kind of rubs up on there so you can't put your air box back in so make sure you take note of that if you have the same model z3 as i do now i believe if you have a different version of the z3 that's not a factor but make sure you do your research first i only really looked into mine and so for my particular uses uh, i'm gonna have to modify my air intake, my cool air intake, so that way it'll all fit. So we'll, that'll be another project that we will go over together. But for today, we're going to do the radiator. And I'm just very excited about this. I went ahead and I got all brand new uh, radiator mounts. We got the top mounts and the bottom mounts right here to put on there. I got 
the auxiliary fan temperature switch. Now this one technically isn't for my Z3 because I again I have uh, a Z3 from the 2000s and I believe the issue is this little tab right here. I believe that doesn't fit the connector on mine so what people do is they just take a razor blade and cut that off to make it work. So we're going to go ahead and test this. Now this is the one that's the 88 Celsius so that way my auxiliary fan will kick in sooner than the OEM one which I believe is set at 90 or 99 Celsius. So we're going to be swapping all that out. So we're going to take the radiator off. Well, the, you can't see it right now because the sun is not working with me at the moment, but we'll take that uh, temperature sensor out right there and everything. And another thing I'm doing is we have these plastic uh, clamps that hold the radiator in place. I'm actually swapping those out as well. And I got something really cool. All right, so I went ahead and got myself some new clamps. These are all aluminum. These are from Garagistic, and they look fantastic. And uh, I think it's really going to make the engine bay look really awesome once we get rid of this plastic and we put these in. Now, um, it says it's supposed to work for the Z3. Again, you know, they're testing this with everything being stock, and my radiator isn't going to be the stock radiator. So we'll find out if the fitment will still work for my needs. I'm going to be very careful when I take these off. So that way, in the event these don't fit, I'll be able to reuse the plastic ones. But here's hoping these fit because these are going to look awesome if they do. So we're going to be trying these out today. We also, got, of course, got the upper and lower radiator hose. Uh, we got to get those replaced. And I got myself some different clamps. Now, the... OEM has the quick connect on one end and it uses the wor has worm drive uh, clamps on this side and worm drive clamps are not the best. They don't stay tight. They can even damage the hoses because over time your rubber hoses are going to um, contract and expand depending on temperature. So if it gets really cold they kind of shrink up a little bit and then if it gets really warm then they start to swell up a bit. And with worm drive uh, clamps, they can get loose as well as they also have those uh, serrated grooves in them. And they can actually start to dig into your rubber and cause leaks. So we're not going to use those. Instead, what I've chosen to go with, if these fit proper, is I went with some T-bolt clamps. So these don't have those um, cut in parts that are going to damage the radiator and It'll have a much cleaner look on the hoses themselves, just like that. Now, these do take up more room on this side, and they have a lock nut on there for adjusting it, so that way, unlike worm drives, these will stay at the same tension that you put them on. They're not going to loosen. So these are better than the worm drives. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to try these out and see if they'll fit. Now, there is a chance that because this sticks out so far, that I might run into some fitment issues with it hitting things. So I wouldn't be able, so I'm gonna have to make sure I have it facing outward to obviously so you can easily tighten it and stuff. I wanna make sure that it doesn't drop down too much to where it's going to have clearance issues with my belt right there. So we'll see how this works. It should, it should be good because uh, uh, I am getting rid of the quick connect poses because these do not fit on my uh, aluminum thermostat housing right there that we switched over to. They won't the it won't they won't snap. They're just a little bit too small, and so when you go to snap them in, it'll actually push the clamp right out, and they won't lock uh, the, this little this little clamp right here. So it's just a little bit larger and doesn't have a good fitment. So to fix that. I did away with the quick connect and we're just going to go traditional uh, hose ends and we're going to use these T-bolt uh, clamps instead. So see how that turns out. And these are going to look pretty nice. Now this is the 1.5 inch which is the 44 to 50 millimeter uh, size ones. These ones are like, I believe I tested them 
for the ones that fit. I also have another size I bought just in case, but I think this was the one that was the perfect fit for the upper and the lower radiator hose. So I'm excited. So I got my tools. Make sure you have an eight millimeter socket. If you don't have anything that small, make sure you get one. I believe from research I've done that there's some eight millimeters on there we're gonna have to deal with. I also went out and I finally did it because after doing that CCV replacement, I hated using the hand tool um, Torx uh, bit like thing. So I went ahead and got me some socket versions of these. So now I have T8 all the way up to T60. And this kit here is from EP Auto. It's the same company that I got my, my hex socket set from that I also use. And I just, I just love, I just love these. So I had to go ahead and get their, whoops, their torque set. So if there's any torque screws on here, which I think there might be when it comes to, once I start working with the fan area, I think I might run into some. But, so I wanted to make sure I was ready in case they had some in there. But, uh, so we're set there. Cause yeah, those hand tools, oh, terrible. I hate using them, but uh, should be good. So let's go ahead. And we're going to have to come up with a plan of attack to get this out. Now, there are going to be some components that we have to save that I'm not replacing. I got replacement mounts, so I'm not worried about that. But we got, so we have this, like, rubber weather stripping here. We're going to be careful not to damage this. I tried to find replacement ones online, and I wasn't able to, to locate any. So I'm going to be careful not to damage these. Mine are in good shape. So I should be fine reusing this. And there's going to be like some like foam on the sides as well that we're going to be careful and reuse. You know, this won't like vibrate and stuff like that. So we'll have that. And we'll have to disconnect the upper and lower hoses. Take those off. We have our overflow right here, which has another little worm drive. We'll take this off and then clamps off. And then I got to figure out, now there's the AC condenser is behind this auxiliary fan. And there's supposed to be four nuts on like some bracing in there that have that, um, so that way that's connected to the radiator in between here. So I need to figure out how I'm able to access that. And so I got to see if I can figure out how to get this fan out of the way. Because uh, once I'm able to lift this one up, I'll be able to get the top two and then I should be able to get the bottom two from below but uh, I'm pretty sure this fan's going to have to come out so um, I'm not quite sure how this comes out I see that like this brace here is got a nut here and one here and there's probably one down in there somewhere and that's just this brace and then I see there's a bolt there and whatnot but uh, we'll have to figure this out so let's go ahead and finally get this thing out of here. So let's get it. Now, obviously, the very first step you would make is you would drain your coolant from your car. Now, I've already done that on one of my early videos for my cooling project. So I don't have to worry about that step. So I'm going to be skipping that. If you don't know how to do that on the Z3, then please go back through my cooling system playlist and go toward to the beginning of the project. And I'll show you how to do that step. That being said... The very next step to remove your mechanical clutch drive to do your change because your fan and everything's going to be in your way. I've done that in a previous project, so you're going to want to check that video out too because your fan and your shroud are going to impede you removing your radiator. So don't forget to check that out as well. After you have your coolant out, is we're going to remove your hoses. Now you have your quick connect hoses that are going to be right here. Just take a pick tool and pull this uh, metal little cl clip right here out. It'll, it'll come straight out, and then you'll be able to yank uh, your hose end off of your thermoset housing. You're gonna have to do that for both the upper and the lower uh, hose right there. And then you'll just follow it along, and you're gonna need a screwdriver, and or you can use a socket if you prefer. And we're gonna go ahead and get those worm drive clamps loosened so we can take both the upper and the lower radiator hoses off. And don't forget your overflow right here. Get this one off as well. Now, my quick connects are not even connected because they don't fit on mine. So that step's done. 
So I'm going to just go ahead and take care of these worm drives. Now, even though I've drained my coolant, there could always still be some lingering amounts of coolant still sitting somewhere in your lines, like your hoses and things. So be prepared that something might still drain out. So have some sort of drain pan or something prepared to catch any of those fluids because they are toxic. And if you do have any animals or small children that have access to your work area, you're going to want to make sure you have that out of there because it tastes sweet to animals and uh, they're not going to know any better. So, all right, that should be good. Plenty loose. And then we'll loosen this one and then we'll pry those off. And then that'll just pull right off. Be very careful not to break that. Now, I'm replacing mine, so I'm not too worried if I break it. But I will keep the worm drive clamp for this one just because it's so small that I really don't see a need for this particular one to, to change this one right now. Now, if I do run into issues where this leaks, see these, these edges? These damage your hoses. So I'm going to keep it for now. But if I do find a small enough clamp of, uh, of a different style, I will change it out because I'm not a fan of these worm drives. But uh, that's out of the way for the moment. And now we can get this other hose off. Just going to wiggle it. And it'll come right off. And just like so. Very, very simple. So let's go ahead and do the same and get the uh, lower radiator hose off on the other side. All right, and then the lower radiator hose, same deal. You have your quick connect. You see how there's this gap right here? That's where you're going to put your pick, like your hook tool through there to pull that out. Now, now mine's not locked in as it won't, mine doesn't fit. So mine's not locked in. It's just kind of resting there. So you follow the hose around and you'll have another worm drive right there. So loosen it and then just pull the hose off. All right, so... Trying to get an angle that you guys could see it means I had to hold my camera and I ended up dropping my camera, which means my uh, uh, Bluetooth connector for my microphone, it ended up having impact on the ground and it broke the USB little plug right out of it. So that means uh, my mic is broken. So I'll have to use the built-in microphone on my phone but uh, so yeah, it's gonna pick up all the background noise now. So I just wanna let you know, I apologize in advance, but it's gonna take, I wouldn't get a replacement until next week and I gotta get this project done. So I gotta keep working. So apologies that the audio quality is now gonna be filled with traffic and birds. <laughs> so, but uh, we got work to do. So let's just make the best of it. And there we have the lower radiator hose. Now, it's good to replace your hoses because you want they could be getting cracked and worn from the heat of the engine bay, or in my case, they're just way too soft and squishy. So go ahead and I'm going to replace mine so they firm up a little bit more. And also, you're not going to be able to see, but it's really like slimy uh, inside there. So... Let's just put some new ones on. Now when it comes to the clamp, get yourself a small screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver. And you're supposed to be able to just kind of push down to get it to, to unclamp. There we got it. Okay. I see how that works. So yeah, you take your screwdriver, you kind of push down in between this groove. And then kind of pry it gently a little bit by pushing the screwdriver back towards the inside of your engine bay. And then that releases this clamp here in the middle. And then once that's released, you can just pull up and it will unsnap like so.
There we go. Just like so. And now that is released. And you'll have like your old mounts here. These were will be replacing mine, so I don't have to worry about those. If you're not replacing your mounts, make sure you remove the old mounts so you can put these on your new radiator. All right, and then right here on the side is your temperature uh, sensor right here. So you're gonna wanna remove that. And you have your little electrical connector here that you'll need to disconnect. And now this is a 22 millimeter or a 7 eighths uh, wrench to unscrew this from your radiator. Now, if you're keeping everything stock, you're keeping your clutch radiator and everything in there, you can reuse the sensor uh, as long as you haven't got any like issues with your cooling overheating or anything to where you know your sensor is still working, you can just reuse that. But since I deleted my clutch fan, I will be switching my sensor out. So be very careful not to break your connector here. And like I said, that's going to be a 22 millimeter or a 7 8 wrench. All right, so you'll I use my little handy dandy little hook tool and you just kind of slip it underneath right here and just enough to pop this up just a little bit there's a tiny little notch it's on and once you got that off you can just wiggle and slide this right off and right there's that little notch right there and uh, that's all you do and that's what your little connector is going to look like now if you have a four cylinder z3 your temperature sensor is actually going to be a different shape so you got to keep an eye out for that your sensor looks different. This is for the six cylinder. Now let's go ahead and get my wrench on there and get that loose. Now it might be easier to get this off if you keep your clamps on and do it first. But you know, knowing me, I tend to do things the harder way. And just bust that loose. And that's what it will look like right there. So I got like this oval connector. I think mine will be fine. Like I said, if you have the four cylinder, yours is a different shape. So this the white one here is the original and the gray is my new one. And looks the same. It has the three three pin in there. So that looks the same. Got the same groove here. That matches, and this all matches. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have to cut anything off. I I know that there was some people said that they had to shave off something to get it to fit in, but this is actually matches mine. So that must be for maybe I don't know if that's the the M model or if maybe that has to do with like one from one of the '90s models. That I don't know, but you may have a different kind of thing going on here. Uh, so, but, uh, alright, we got that off, so, let's just set it aside for now. Alright, now, you'll be able to wiggle this around nice and loose, and you'll be able to remove, uh, this rubber strip that's right here. Just be very careful not to damage anything. And we'll just slowly, kind of just pry that straight up. Because this piece we will keep and put on the new radiator. Alright, looking at mine, I don't think I have to unscrew anything else. Not that I can see. Looks like I can just raise it straight out. Because, yeah, it's not attached from what I can tell to my AC uh, condenser right there. So some of you might have it bolted in. There would be like a aluminum band kind of a bracket where you'll have two nuts holding it on top and then you'd have to lift this up a little bit to access the bottom two. But it doesn't look like mine has that. So that just makes this a lot easier to remove. So let me just kind of look around and make sure there's nothing else connected anywhere. And I think I can just lift mine right out. So that's very simple. This job just got easier because I was anticipating 
my AC condenser being bracketed to the radiator, but it's not. Happy day. All right, let's just raise it up. Just like that. All right, and here is my stock radiator. You can see I got, whoop, my fan blade hit it right there. And like all of these is from my fan blade uh, when my blades broke off. Now I have poured water in there into my system a couple times to kind of flush it. And I didn't notice the radiator itself leaking. But since I don't know, this might origin this might be the original radiator. I don't know if they ever changed it. And I know depending on your vehicle, I think it's recommended every forty to eighty thousand miles. That's a big gap. I know it really depends on your vehicle um, and how you're using it. Uh, these will last a long time if you're just you know a daily driver. But if you're taking your car on the track. A radiator might only last you a year so uh, we'll go ahead and show you here that on these you see how it's got all this plastic now it's really common over time this stuff cracks and you'll get coolant leaks there um, sometimes this stuff uh, your overflow right here will leak your hoses will leak uh, once those go bad or if you just have those bad worm drive clamps uh, so overall I think my radiator is still in really good shape now if you want the part number on here it looks like the sticker is still legible here's your part number information right there now you can go if you're wanting to keep your car as stock as possible and to keep the cost down you can just get yourself a, a Nissan's uh, radiator and you'll be good to go it'll be the same as this has the plastic and it'll last you a good long time now I am getting rid of plastic <laughs> and I might do autocross so I don't want that plastic so that's why I'm doing my upgrade but uh, make sure if you're not replacing your stuff, go ahead and pull their, your upper mounts out. And then you'll have your lower rubber mount will be right here. And there will be another one right over here. Make sure you pull that off if you plan to reuse those. I got new ones, so I might remove them just to keep them as spares. Just what if kind of a thing. Um, but uh, I don't really need them. And then on the bottom, now hopefully I don't spill anything everywhere. There might still be some fluid in here. I'm the, hold on, let me try to flip this over so I don't uh, spill any coolant that might still be in it or water. All right, so I flipped my radiator upside down and I don't have one, but so here's the, now you can see these mounts better. These are your lower radiator mounts right here. And you've got these hooks kind of like right here. And uh, that ties in to, we go back over to the car. Straight down here, you have this like rubber little spot here that it kind of just hooks on and kind of seats into into that and that's just a guard to help keep water and debris uh, from to getting in between there so and it works because mine's pretty freaking clean there's no gunk in there so and here's my condenser you can see there's no brackets or anything mine wasn't connected to anything fighting with the light so here's that foam right here and there's another one right here some uh, padding to help protect from vibration all right so we are good. So you might have some differences on yours, but thankfully mine wasn't just easy, you know, drop in kind of a situation. Otherwise you might have some little metal clamps as well that you would have to take off and move over so you can connect your condenser, but mine doesn't do that. So, whoo, time saved. Love it. 
Okay. Oh, and you can see I got that new nut on here for my water pump to protect those threads and it looks nicer. So I got that finished. All right, well, the only other thing is on your radiator, on the bottom of your radiator, sometimes they will have like a coolant level sensor. Mine doesn't seem to have that, but check to see if yours does. And if you do, you might need a 30 millimeter uh, wrench to get it off, or if you have um, a hex socket set, um, it'll have the, the hex uh, uh, female end in it as well that you could use to loosen it, and it'll just kind of unscrew from the bottom of the radiator, and uh, that's just the coolant level my, uh, little sensor. So there you have it, that's what mine looks like. All right, so my upper and lower radiator hose and my radiator mounts I got from Rock Auto, and this is the upper radiator mount. I got two of these. This is the Euro parts, and there's the part number information right there. Let's go ahead and put those in. And then that should just kind of just slide in. Not a very tight fit, but it'll work. Same on the other side. Just gonna put that in there. All right, that one's tight because the TIG weld snugs that one up really well. The lower radiator mounts. There's your part number for those and get two of these. This is only if you don't plan on reusing the ones that are on your original radiator. If you know they're heavily worn and cracked, go ahead and replace them. They're inexpensive. All right, let's go ahead and slide these on. All right, and then we'll just slide. This just goes on right here. Now, if you can't get yours on, you can put a little silicone grease on there to help put them on, but a little elbow grease works too. Now this is the only thing I'm concerned about. So it looks like the drain plug is directly on the bottom, whereas on the OEM it has a spout out of the side. So that's the only thing is I don't know how that's going to fit. It should be fine, but it sounds like that would be a pain when it comes to draining it that it might have to take that that water like strip out from the bottom, you might have to remove that to access the drain plug on this one. But, uh, alright, let's go ahead and drop this in. I went ahead and removed the plastic radiator clamps and it just kind of hooks in right underneath right here. So you just gotta kind of carefully kind of twist it till the end pops out and then just kind of pull it right out. It's real easy, just be careful not to snap it because, you know, it's plastic. Okay, let's go ahead and drop the new, the, the coil right in. Just gotta line up where the lower mounts go. And then it just sits right in. Pretty darn good. All right, yeah. It's easy enough. All right, so there that sits. And then It'll get clamped in. You'll put your rubber piece back here. You put your clamps on to hold it in place. We'll put our sensor in and then the hoses. But uh, yeah, it looks good. 
Let me do a test to see how this would kind of like a mock-up. So if you were to have... Well, clearly this piece here would be folded underneath, but you get the idea. So that's how it would be attached if you had the plastic ones. And then just kind of rest it there. It's going to be kind of hard to get them both in the frame at the same time. But I do like the look of this. I do. But yeah, it's way too high. So... I'll have to take this off and uh, see if that fits there better. And if it don't work, then just put the original plastic ones back on. No harm done. Very cool. So it'll look kind of like that. Versus give you a top view so that way it looks like it's fitting properly, even though it's not at the moment. So there's, that's the garagistic clamp. OEM clamp. So yeah, this is a lot cleaner of a look so very nice so i went ahead and i took the two screws out of it because i thought this was a spacer it's not a spacer you just flip it and it would go like that so i think this is the piece that clamps underneath and then you just screw this down on top to hold it in place you, there's no drilling oh that's ingenious so it's not a spacer, that's the actual clamp to go underneath the body, just like the the original ones here. They clamp, but this here hooks up underneath to hold it in and then just locks down. So this is that hook right there. I get it. Now there is this wiring that's right there that I'm see it might get in the way okay so it feeds underneath here and that is in my way so I'm gonna have to figure out how I can get this to hook on underneath with this wire here because not really much slack to really push it down. Uh, I'll have to play with it. I'll have to play with it and see if I can't get it to work. But yeah, this will hook up underneath. And then this will screw straight down on top. And it's going to look classy. While doing my test fitting, I noticed that the radiator was sitting down too deep. Uh, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the right level. So... I did a little experimenting, so I went ahead and I put this rubber trim back on. This way I would have these indentations on here as my way of seeing when the radiator is at the correct level. And this is what I also did. And my little clamp, it just sits right underneath here. And there's this metal piece right here. So that pinches the wire underneath there to help keep that snug and then I'll have to put another one the other one on here I washed this off so the original outline of the original clamp won't be there so that way it doesn't stand out so now when I set that radiator in these little clamps right here should line up with the indentations on the rubber um, weather stripping so that was what I did to kind of get it to fit right. I, without that weather stripping and dentation marks, I couldn't tell if it was too high or too low. And I even tried using the original clamps and because it was so low, the original clamps wouldn't even hold it. So I think now with that, it should line up and I should be able to put my clamps on to hold it in correctly. All right, so now you can see that this lines up perfect look at that there's the original indentation and yeah it's the right level so this is now officially sitting at the OEM level so now I know we're good there so now I should be able to put my brackets in and uh, snug it up but yeah a little minor modification I ran into a different development so the bracket will not fit right here 
And it's because this metal that's right under here, it's making contact with that metal right there. Uh, so, this piece right here. So, I'm going to take my Dremel and I'm going to try to cut a little bit bigger of a chunk of that out. So that way my bracket will sit there. And then I'll be able to install it. So that's the only modification I really need to make. Alright, let's cut it. And be very careful not to cut any of my wiring right here. And apologies again for audio quality. It's not going to sound very good. Well, it sits there now. That's good. I would like the option to sit it in a little deeper though. So let's cut a little more. It'll fit in there, but I want to be able to slide it as tightly up against this as I can, just in case I need to. I grinded it down as much as I can get. My Dremel won't fit in any further. And then I went ahead, I got some old like chrome paint. I went ahead and I just touched off where it was cut. So that way it won't rust there. And uh, hopefully now, when I go to, it'll fit in proper. All right, now let's see if this will tighten up properly. So it still feels like it's down too low. Okay, I see the issue. I think it just because it wasn't pressed in enough. All right, we got the brackets on. I'll probably have to go underneath and maybe put some, maybe it might need to put in some kind of a spacer to make sure this doesn't sink down. But it seems pretty firm. It's not sliding around now that I got them both of them tight. So I think we're good. I think it was just a matter of, it was kind of tilting because it was tight on one side and loose on the other. But now it's pretty firm. Now we still got to put that sensor in on the side. You don't need to put it on too tight. I think it's like 14 newton meters, so it's not very tight. So just get it nice and snug. And then once again, if we compare these, the white one here is the original. And if you look, that's the 91 to 99 degrees Celsius. And then the new one is the 80 to 88. So just what you guys can see proof that this is going to be lower temperature so that way my fan will kick in sooner. All right, let's get that in there. Okay, so I've noticed that it's not fitting, the connector won't fit in. And I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but inside here you have this little groove right here, just like that. On the other one, it's reversed. The This open sliding groove is over on this side it's opposite so it's preventing it from sliding into place now it's kind of dark you're not going to see that but that's the only difference I'm seeing is this groove is opposite so I'm wondering if I'm careful if I can break that plastic out in there enough to where this will go in now there, there, they did say that there was an issue where a plastic piece would have to get cut to get it to fit. So I'm, I thought it was this piece. Focus. Oh, there we go. That piece. But no, I think that's the piece they're talking about is the fact that the groove 
is on the left and the other one the groove is on the right so I gotta break that piece out and then it should slide into place so we'll try it and if it don't work I still got the original one to get me by until I can figure out a solution but uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this to fit in there and without damaging the prongs otherwise this thing will be useless if I damage that so gotta be there let's see see what happens so not sure how well this is going to show up, but if you look down in there, you'll see that that middle piece I got out. And what I did is I used a really, really small uh, little like razor blade, and I laid it down, and I just kind of got to the edge, and I just kind of pressed down on it enough to put a small little slit on the one end. Then I took a flathead screwdriver, one that was the just the right size to where it fit perfectly right into that groove underneath that plastic tab and I was able to twist it enough to pry the plastic piece enough to where it would it broke and then very carefully not to you know hit any of those prongs in there then you might be able to do this with tweezers I didn't have tweezers at hand so I my needle nose pliers just barely fit in there and I was able to grab that piece once it was snapped away to where it was only connected on the bottom. It wasn't connected on the sides. And I was able to fit my needle nose on there. And then I just yanked really, really hard so that way it would tear it from the bottom part that it was attached to. And I didn't hit any of the prongs in there. So now, fingers crossed, it should slide onto the connector. And uh, we should be in business. So I'm going to do a test fit before I screw this in and see if it will slide in here now. And it will, it will, I just have to force it a little bit more to get it to click, but it fits. So now we're back in business. Let's go ahead and screw it in and uh, we got it. So yeah, you'll just have to bust that middle piece of plastic out of there to modify it if your connector doesn't fit for this one. Because this is made for, um, a, it's not made for all the Z3s, so you got to modify it a bit. All right, I got mine on. Now, all I had to do is once I had it snug, is I just put some pressure on the back of the clip right here, and because it was kind of pushed up, so by adding a little pressure and kind of pulling up on it on the back, it made it to where it went up and over that little latch right there, that little notch, and now it's locked in place. I can't take it off, so we got her attached. What you need to do is put the upper and lower hoses on, so. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you're not doing the same project I am, then you would also have to put your fan and shroud and all that stuff back on. But uh, for t me, I just got to do that. Now, it does have these screws in here on this side and that side. And uh, I'm thinking maybe those are for like an electric fan setup or maybe if you had the expansion tank on yours maybe it connects there i i don't really know because it's got it on both sides i don't have a use for these at the moment so i'm going to tighten these down just so they don't kind of like rattle themselves out but uh if my car doesn't heat the way i want it to with this delete then i will put an electric fan in and i might be able to use these then to mount my brackets to hold the fan in place that could come in handy so we will see just like that I'm not gonna fully tighten it right now but we'll see if that works if this doesn't work I'll buy a generic hose I'll have to get the diameter of this and the diameter of there and uh, might have to do some uh, some finagling with a uh, different hose and maybe uh, 
it works on this end so I might need to get a different diameter like a coupler piece to put on that end to get it to go far enough on because I'm worried there won't be enough here to grip to prevent leaks so we'll have to see when we do the actual testing but this is just test fitting right now to see if everything's in right so I don't have to exchange parts and uh, and, and whatnot so that goes there I said I'll have to do some test fitting on this radiator because it it moves up and down so I'm gonna have to put something underneath it to keep it from sliding down and uh, and then we're we're good there so well some minor adjustments will have to be made but overall this isn't bad all right let me just get that last hose test fitted make sure that works and then we're good all right so problem this hose was what came up on Rock Auto for the same part number as this one just without the quick connect but it's not the right size hose because if you look at it let me zoom this out if you look at it so like that bend kind of matches not really but kind of matches but then you see here it bends here and this one don't so it don't fit on and diameter wise this is a meteor uh, got a little bit bigger of a um, I think the inside diameter is the same it's just the outside diameter is more so but it's mostly just the it doesn't have the right bends to it so this is wrong so what I'm gonna have to do is find a different hose without a quick connect because I can't use the quick connect feature I would love to be able to use the quick connect but they won't snap on to that thermostat so my options are to either go back to the plastic thermostat housing so I can use the quick connect hoses or do some hose modifying I'm gonna have to get some like couplers or something and uh, see if I can get a different hose otherwise this I'm gonna have to just buy something different because I don't have the right bends in this or cut this shorter to get it to fit on I don't know so some modifying is going to have to happen so this is going to be a to be continued um, on another day all right my friends so it's been a week and I got some new um, parts here to kind of make this modification work so where we left off is the radiator hose that I had gotten um, this one right here for my lower radiator hose this one does not fit because the bend on it is wrong uh, this is what the OEM one looks like so it has a lot more of a curve to this top part here it has this elbow whereas the new one it's straight so this doesn't fit so I had to come up with a new game plan and so this is my idea I went online to, and I picked up one of these flex hoses um, I've done a lot of research on them and people are really happy with the hose themselves they just do not like the connectors that come with it so I won't use these so the issue with these is um, people say that the rubber inserts uh, fall apart as well as the hose clamps they're really really cheap and they bend and they don't stay tight uh, so if you want to use these little coupler piece to make everything look nice what you're gonna want to do is buy new clamps and get don't use the metal and uh, just use radiator hose just use radiator hose cut it to size and put that in and you can uh, you can use this now the hose that I'm gonna be now the hose that I'm gonna be cutting so since my lower radiator hose doesn't fit and I do have this nice straight on it this is gonna work out well because I'm gonna use this hose I'm gonna cut it into two sections off the straight piece here and I'm going to use this as a coupler for this. This hose is perfect. It's the so the inside diameter for these I believe is 1.5 inches, uh, and this is also a 1.5 outside diameter, and uh, it actually fits perfectly inside the hose. So I'm going to be able to insert this in one end, 
and then have the other end go on my radiator or my thermostat housing and put two clamps on it and it's going to work perfect. I'm not going to use it. It would have been nice if I could have used it so that way it would have a more clean look on the ends. But at this point, I just want a hose that fits and doesn't leak. So, you know, form follows function, people. So we got to make sure it functions. So I just want the hose. And I went ahead, I, I pulled out one of my saws. I had this laying around from when I was doing some plumbing in the house. So I'll be able to get the length I need, bend it the way I need it, and we're going to get this mounted. And I can still... And this way, the hose that I bought won't go to waste. I'm going to repurpose it. Now, another issue I ran into when putting in the coil radiator is it doesn't sit at the OEM level. It likes to sink down too far. And I tried doing some adjustments with the radiator mounts, and it just keeps sinking. So I had that week to kind of brainstorm what I want to do about that, and I came up with an idea. So this is one of the original lower radiator mounts that was on the OEM radiator. I'm going to use this just for the example. So this sits on the base of the radiator, right? And the radiator is falling down. Now if I was to just slide the mount down lower so that way it sits, that'll work for now. But I'm worried that over time the vibration that's it's going to be impacting it from driving is going to slowly push this mount back up and then my radiator is going to sink. So my plan is I went to Lowe's and I picked up these hose washers. I, I believe these are for like the inside of like a garden hose. So I went and I got some of these and I think this was going to be a better plan is I'm going to use them <coughs> excuse me as spacers. So I'm going to slide down this mount and do a test fit to see how far down the, the mount needs to be to where the radiator sits at the right level without sliding down. I'm going to mark it. And then I'm going to fill that gap with these washers and use them as a spacer. The inside diameter of that ring is the, right, is the same size as the male end of the post for the mount. So this is going to make a great spacer. So I should be able to just stack these up for however many I need so that way the vibration of the car won't sink the mount back up and cause my issues and I wanted to make sure these were rubber so it could absorb that vibration in that because uh, if I use metal washers I was I was worried that you know that's not going to absorb any vibration and uh, I didn't know if that was going to create any other issues with noise and things like that nature uh, so I figured this would be my best bet. So we're going to try that. So we'll, uh, we'll do some measuring and see how many of these I need to compact in between the radiator and the mount to keep it so that way my radiator isn't sinking anymore. So once again, I got these at Lowe's. It's these Danco 5 8 inch uh, washers. It's the 80787. Just go to the plumbing section where they have all of their like faucet stuff and uh, you should find them there hanging up on the wall. But uh, I think this is a brilliant idea that I came up with to solve that issue. So we'll put that to the test. All right, so here we have the radiator out and I put two of those washers on there to do our test fit with and I did that on both sides. So I'm thinking that's all I need. This should hopefully fix my fitment issue with it sinking down too far. So we should be good there and uh, get it done. I, I really want to get this to work because I'm tired of taking this in and out with all these test fits because I'm starting to slowly damage it a little bit from handling it so much. So hopefully this will be the last time I'll have to put it in and it can just stay in. So let's go ahead and get that hose. Uh, figured out. All right, so we know that the hose is going to connect here. It's going to go right there, and then it has to turn 
and come to about here. I put a mark right here in the dust of where the radiator outlet is, and it comes out to about here. So it needs to come out here, like a straight here, and then it needs to kind of bend and come straight, and then kind of bend. As long as I'm not making contact with the belt, we'll be okay. All right, so my different hand saws weren't really cutting it very well. As you can see, it cut it a little bit. I got a little bit of a gap, but it's going to take up too much effort. So I'm just going to use my Dremel. This should work a lot easier. So. All right, we got her cut, and now we'll be able to bend it. I'm going to put the sanding attachment on there so I can kind of deburr this and smooth it out so the sharp edges don't cause any damage to the rubber hose that this will be inserted into. Not too bad. And then uh, I'll wipe it out, and uh, if you have like an actual file, that would work probably really well. I don't have a file, so hopefully this will be pretty good, but uh, we should be able to use this. So, uh, all right, let's get this uh, figured out here. All right, I'm also going to go ahead and just cut this hose. Like I said, I got this nice straight um, on this hose that doesn't work for me. Since we're going to make couplers out of this, I should only need from maybe this much of the hose, but I'm going to go a little further just in case. Having a little bit of an angle might come in handy at somewhere, so let's just cut it right where it starts to bend, and we'll go from there. All right, there we go. Now we can use these. Honestly, if I needed some kind of crazy angle, I could even use this piece. All right, so this is where I'm at so far. I cut up that hose. I used the actual bend that was left over because that actually works perfect for the part that will come off of the thermostat housing. And then I went and I cut a small straight piece because this is going to connect to the radiator outlet as well as this end of the hose would then go inside there and then I connect it there. Okay, so here is a quick update. I went ahead and I actually put three of these washers on each end for the mounts. Um, four isn't going to be too many and it won't fit, but I was able to put three on there and still have enough of the like outlet left for the rubber uh, mount to still uh, attach to it and I was able to put my clamps on and now it's nice and snug. I don't have any more play in my radiator moving so that was the way to go and it's a little higher here but I don't think we're running into any issues there. I could uh, always tighten this down more and that might push it down a little bit more on those on those rubber washers. But when I had the two washers, I still had some play in the radiator. So this uh, takes care of that issue. So there you go. If you end up having to do this, three washers on each end is what it took for mine to fit. All right, so here's an update for the radiator hose situation. So I went ahead and I got this, you know, kind of bent and cut through to the right shape and my issue is even though this is the right shape the inside diameter is not going to work out because of the quick connect setup on the thermostat housing it's got that that outer ridge where the quick connect snaps on and there isn't enough um there isn't enough surface below that to put a clamp to hold this while under pressure. So I have to slip past that ridge. So what I'm going to have to do is I went 
And I just found the cheapest hose I could find. I just found the cheapest hose I could find that has a one and three quarter end that and it didn't it reduces to a one and a half. So what I'm going to do now this one originally had this metal spring in it. That spring will keep this from kinking up like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this hose. That's why I took the spring out, because I need to cut the rubber hose. And I'm gonna create this, turn this into my coupler because this hose it's too long to fit by itself, even with bending it, to make it the lower radiator hose, and it's too short for my upper radiator hose. But I'm going to be able to use this to create a coupler since I have that reducer uh, option right here, um, and that should do the trick. Now, if you go on Amazon and you look up couplers that are like 1.75 to 1.5, the only thing that's going to come up are couplers that are for air intakes okay so don't be fooled by that don't think that's a radiator coupler it is not so do not buy those they're gonna have like these perfectly sized elbows that are like 45 degree and 90 degree elbows those are not meant for coolant those are for air only so do not buy one of those off Amazon that's why I went and I got just like a standard radiator hose that I can modify myself because this is going to have the right uh, consistency and thickness for the coolant okay those other hoses are too thin because they're not meant for any kind of fluid they're just to put on your cold air intake so don't buy those on Amazon just get yourself a hose <laughs> all right all right now if I can find the proper length of one to just go one full out like this that'd be great this one here I believe it was like 13 inches and I think 13 and 5 eighths I think is what this one's advertised to be and this one is still too long um, so it's just at this point I'm tired of buying hoses so I'm gonna just make this one work uh, because of that ridge that goes around the neck of the thermostat housing that the quick connect snaps on the OE hose I bought for the upper radiator hose is not going to work either because I can't slip this on far enough to put a clamp. So even though this is the perfect size and it does go on, I can't slide it on far enough to clamp it. So I can't use this one either. So I went ahead to fix that issue as I went and I bought a different hose. Now this one's a Continental Flex hose. This is the 52420. Um, you can get them at some of your parts stores might carry them. I just ordered mine off Amazon. Now Amazon advertises this as a 19 and a half inch length hose. The manufacturer, they say it's a 19 on here. It's one and a half by the one and three quarter by 19. So they say it's a 19. Amazon says it's 19 and a half. I measured it myself and it came out to 18 and a half. My guessing is they're factoring in what it would be if this was completely stretched out before they kinked it up when they manufactured it. So that might be where the additional length is coming from. Uh, you're, there's no way anybody using this hose is going to go off of what it was before they did that. They're going to go off of the actual length it is now. And this is 18 and a half inches. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a tight fit, but it does work for the upper radiator hose. Uh, I got that one and three quarter end to slip past that neck for the quick connect and I'll be able to clamp there and that reduces to the one and a half for the radiator. So this is perfect. I've already test fitted it. Like I said, it's a little tight when it comes to bending it, but it fits perfect. All right. It's just snug. It's a little, it's tight, but it fits. So this is going to work out great. So this is what I'll be using for the upper radiator house situation. Let's get the... Let's go ahead and get this one on since this one already fits and then I'll have to do some more cutting to get that lower uh, radiator hose sorted out so I can make a different coupler for my tube here and uh, I will need to cut this a little shorter because it still doesn't quite fit so I'm gonna have to keep cutting it until I get it just right but I want to get the coupler part right first and then 
cut this to the correct length and hopefully get it on and we'll be in business. Alright, so I got two of my T-bolt uh, clamps here. I'm going to be using the 1.5 inch to go over the radiator side and then I got my 1.75 inch to go over the, on the thermostat side and once again you can see this is that lip I'm talking about that I need to be able to get the hose pass because this is not enough for clamping and because it kind of bevels down and shrinks that it's not going to stay tight there's going to be like an air gap and it's going to definitely leak so I want to get past that so I can go far enough in alright so I want this clamp to face that way and this one's going to face the opposite for when I bend it You see how that just slide, slid right on past there? And I'll be able to get my clamp right there. And then this is where this one gets to be a little snug, but it will bend and it'll go on right there and it'll fit right there. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is orientation. I might need to maybe raise this up a bit like that to ensure that it'll still flow. But it, it does work. So then this clamp will go here, and that's how that's going to fit on there. And it works pretty good, like I said. I'll just pull this up a bit, and uh, yeah, I think it'll be fine. You just want to make sure, because if I put it under, it might still work. I just want to make sure that the fluid, that might actually be better, because then it kind of has to go down. I just want to make sure the fluid can flow from the and make it where it needs to go and not get like have it like make it like a weird dip where it kind of gets kind of hung up. All right, we should be good. Hmm, I might need to try maybe the smaller clamp. Because I'm tightening this quite a bit. I'm going to get maximum. Alright. That's on tight. Hopefully it won't leak. So that works. I don't like how long this bolt is sticking out. The stud here. So I'm wondering if maybe I could get away with a 1.5 clamp. So I guess I'm going to take it off. We'll try the 1.5, um, and if it don't fit, then I guess we'll, I can always cut that stud shorter if I wanted to, so it looks a little more cleaned up, but uh, it works, it keeps it on nice and tight, so, alright, so I tried doing the, uh, the 1.5, and it would not, even when I was had it fully tight, I was able to still yank the hose off by hand because it just couldn't grip right because it just didn't fit. So I went back to the 1.75 and uh, I can't pull it off by hand. And I went ahead and got this one tightened on with the 1.5. And again, yeah, it's on tight. This hose is not going nowhere. So this is good. Um, I don't like how much of this bolt is sticking out on these. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these shorter. Um, and that should do the trick. Uh, these are these are uh, nylon uh, lock nuts, uh, so these aren't going to loosen. And I don't really need this much on there, so I think I may cut these shorter just to make them look a little nicer because that's pretty obnoxious. But these are better clamps than your worm clamps. Here we go, one hose down. Now to get this one custom fit, so we can get that bottom one in. And then the radiator will be officially fully installed. All right, it took some doing, but I finally got a hose that fits. <laughs> now, it's a tight fit, but once you get it over the thermostat lip, then it fits beautifully. It just, it's hard getting it over, bending it over, but once I get there, it works. So, I got it. I just got to get some clamps. 
um, over this, and then force it back in place again, tighten it all down, and uh, she's done. But uh, yeah, this was a difficult trying to come up with a way to get a hose to fit in there because you don't have much clearance to do a 90. You have to do a 90 and you have to turn it, otherwise there's a bar back here you hit. And if you have it down too far, then you hit the pulley in your belt. So you got to have it just right and the fit underneath here to get to the thermostat. So I finally got something together that fits. All right, let's go ahead and clamp it all down and get it in there. All right, my friends, we got the lower radiator hose connected. It was a very, very tight fit. I definitely struggled. Uh... I'm hoping everything's tight enough to where I won't have any leaks. Uh, I am worried about the clearance between the pulley and this hose. It's really close. I might need to try to pull up on this. But otherwise, it's officially all attached, you guys. We've got the lower, we've got the upper. Everything's in. This project's complete. We'll still got to get, on the next video, we'll do the coolant reservoir i'm going to replace that as well as all the hoses that connect to it and go to the heater core uh, i was unsure if i wanted to do it but i decided we're going to do it so that's the next project and then once that's done we will do a pressure leak test to make sure everything's tight and we have no leaks and then we can put the intake manifold back together and the car is going to be just about done but Aftermarket parts mean aftermarket problems, so getting a hose put together to fit was definitely a huge issue, but I finally got it, so hopefully it doesn't leak. I did not use the Permatex. My original plan was to put that inside the ribs for the aluminum pipe. I decided not to use it. We'll see if it leaks. If I, if I have leaks, then I'll take it apart and I'll use it, but I'm hoping everything's really nice and tight and I won't need to use it. So we'll find out when we do the pressure test. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This radiator project was a tough one, all because of the difficulty with that lower radiator hose with the clearance and the bends. If the aftermarket thermostat housing, if that rib was a little bit smaller, the OEM quick connect hoses would fit, but the aftermarket, they made it the wrong size, so I couldn't use the original hoses, which led to all of my problems. But uh, I got it, it's in. It's a beautiful radiator, so hopefully real soon, we'll be able to do our tests to make sure we have no leaks on any of the hoses. Uh, so that's coming up. We got a little bit more stuff to replace, but this project is slowly coming to an end. It's just been a long road. My, I had planned to get this done within like a week, but then with different parts and everything and the budget, it, this, I've, I've, I'm two months into this project now of not being able to use my Z3. Uh, so I really hope everything works because my car's been down a long time and I, 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 I miss driving it. So let's hope all this pays off in the end. But uh, thank you guys for being along on this journey. We got plenty more to do, so if this video uh, was good for you, you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. We need those likes, you guys. It helps out. Also, leave comments, anything and everything, <laughs> all right? It really helps out, so uh, I do appreciate all the comments I've been getting, and I respond to every single one, so thank you guys for that. I really appreciate your support. Uh, you can go to my Instagram, at CoolCatTerry, and check out progress there. And uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, hopefully I'll see you guys real soon on the next cooling project video. So we're getting there. See you guys soon. Bye.